Genesis chapter number 12. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Let's pray. Father, we do bless your name. You are worthy of all adoration, all praise, all laud, all honor, all glory. And God, we're hastening and looking for the day when we see you as you are, and we gather around your throne, uh, and uh, every tongue and kindred and nation of people that are there will bow before you and proclaim uh, how worthy you really are. But Lord, uh, until that day, may we live in light of that, and may folks see Jesus in us. Lord, we realize the only reason we're not in heaven today is you still are seeking to save that which is lost. You still are concerned about sinners. You still want your church to be the lighthouse to this whole world. Uh, you want your people to be salt and light uh, and making a difference uh, and showing compassion to sinners and letting them know Jesus saves, uh, Jesus saves. Uh, now, fathers, we come this morning and bow these unworthy heads before you. We do want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your blessings. We want to thank you for your tender mercy and your loving kindness towards us. Uh, Father, we don't deserve your goodness towards us, but we sure do appreciate it. We sure do bless your holy name. Now, Father, you knew long before we ever uh, 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 began to think about this day, you knew this day would befall us. Uh, you knew who would be here. You knew what we stood in need of. Uh, and, Father, I pray you'd help us this morning. Lord, I realize... Uh, We've had the hustle and bustle of the holidays. Uh, we probably all ate a little bit more than we should have. Uh, and Father, as we come today, uh, 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 some may not even be in the spirit of worship. Uh, some may be uh, in a state of uh, uh, concern. Some may not uh, have a good outlook for the days that lie ahead. Uh, Father, some may just uh, uh, be struggling or dealing with some things in their life. Uh, Others, Lord, may come, and they may be excited to hear what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and, Father, there may be some here amongst us today uh, who are backslid, cold, and indifferent on God. Uh, and there may even be some here today unsaved, lost without the Lord. Uh, but, Father, we know uh, that you uh, are in our midst. And, God, we ask that you'd speak to hearts. Uh, you'd revive the saints. You'd save the lost. Uh, you'd help folks uh, 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 with where they are in their lives to realize that you do care and that, God, you're on the throne. Uh, now, Father, help us uh, use this unworthy vessel and glorify your name. We'll thank you for it. Uh, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. Amen. Now, I, I, we find here uh, uh, something that is uh, very impactful uh, uh, concerning the nation of Israel and concerning you and I today. Had Genesis chapter 12 uh, not uh, uh, come into fruition, uh, we all might be in bad shape today. I want you to notice some things about this chapter. I want you to notice, first of all, the call of Abraham. In verse number 1, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land uh, that I will show thee. Uh, notice Abram didn't call to the Lord uh, and say, Lord, I'm going to do this for you. That's important because I know of an independent Baptist preacher down in Texas says he wasn't called to preach, he volunteered. And friend, if God doesn't call you, you can't do the job. Mm. Nowhere was it in Abraham's mind to do anything for God or to follow after God. 
Now I want to tell you something. Nowhere was it in your mind to be saved until the Lord showed up uh, and began to deal with your heart. Uh, and if you're serving God in ministry, nowhere uh, uh, in your thought process was, I think I'll just go and do this. Uh, uh, God put that in your heart. Uh, and we find that God called Abram. And I want you to notice not only the call of Abram, I want you to notice the covenant that God made with Abram. Look at verse 2. He said, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. We know that through Abram or Abraham uh, we have Israel. And can I say that the Jews still call him Father Abraham? He's the father of faith. And can I say? In Hebrews 11, it makes it very clear, because of his great faith, uh, we have learned to live by faith. He's still the father of faith. And we're thankful for that. And we're thankful for Israel. Because had it not been it for Israel, there wouldn't be no need for the church. Do you know Jesus was a Jew? I'm trying to help you this morning. Somebody wake up. See, the call to Abraham... We see the covenant of God with Abram. But I want you to notice the commitment he made to Abram. Very important. Look in verse 3. He said, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Can I say, verse number 3 is still uh, in... Uh, tack today God still blesses them that blesses Israel and God curses them that curses Israel if for nothing else you ought to be thankful for President Trump for what kindness he's shown to Israel mm. do you realize the only reason we still got a country today is America for the most part has always been friends with Israel hmm there are some in our country that don't like Israel. Some in our Congress don't like Israel. Former Pastor Obama, President Obama didn't like Israel. But thanks be unto God, there's still some that stand with Israel. Mm -hmm. But we see his commitment to Abram. He'd bless them that blessed them. He'd curse them that cursed them. You ought to pray for the peace of Israel. You ought to thank God for Israel. You ought to be for Israel. I want you to notice something here. Uh, and, and if you're taking notes, write this down. This ain't the message, but this will help you. All right? In Abraham's life, we find the steps of separation for your life. In Abraham's life, you find he submits to the will of God. In verse number four. In Abraham's life, you see the step of faith. In verse number 4. In Abraham's life, he offers supplication and sacrifices in verses 7 and 8. Are you writing fast? In Abraham's life, you find he weathers some storms in verse number 10. In Abraham's life, you see he revisits the sacrifice. Sometimes you've got to keep going back to the altar. You find that in chapter 13, verses 3 and 4. In Abraham's life, you find that he overcomes strife. You find that in chapter 13, verses 6 and 7. If you've never faced strife, you've never lived. Hmm? But you find in Abraham's life you can overcome it. Uh, uh, in Abraham's life you find he is steadfast in righteousness. You find that in chapter 13, verses 10 through 13. And in Abraham's life you find that his life satisfied the Lord. And if you uh, 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 live by faith at all, your desire ought to be to please God because of his goodness. You find uh, Abraham doing that in chapter 13, verses 14 through 18. But I'm not going to preach on that, all right? I'm interested in verse number 1. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Notice that Abram had to leave his homeland. If you went and read at the end of chapter number 11, you'd find that his father and them, there were sojourners in Canaan land. If you study the Bible, you know Canaan land is always a picture of victorious Christian living. 
uh, uh, what uh, uh, Joshua is to the Old Testament of them going into Canaan land is what his Ephesians is to the church. It's a place of victory. It's a place of joy. It's a place of blessing. It's a place of hope. Uh, and that's where he's dwelling. And God says, no, you've got to leave that. Hmm? I want to tell you something. Whenever God puts something in your life that causes you to remove yourself from living on the mountaintop to head to a valley that's always troubling in your soul. Abram had to leave his homeland. Can I say he had to leave his heritage? He had a great life in Canaan land. He had become very wealthy and very established in Canaan land. He was uh, the heir to his father's fortune in Canaan land. And God said, you've got to leave all that. And can I say this? He also had to leave his hopes. He had certain goals and dreams he had established for his life there in Canaan land. He had to leave that. And can I say, when God told him to leave, God said, it's okay, i got a mansion for you, and i got uh, uh, the best camel for you to ride on, and everything you thought you had in Canaan land, I'm going to give you a lot more of that on down the road. No, that's not what God said. Look what God said in verse number 1. He said, you've got to leave, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, from thy father's home unto a land, here it is, that I will show thee. Brother Bob, he didn't give him all the answers. He said, you've got to leave everything you've known, but I'm not going to give you any details. I'm not going to give you any descriptions. I'm not going to give you any definitives. You've just got to get up and go. And when the Lord first called me from the corporate world to pastor, uh, Miss Nett was pregnant with Christian out to here. And shortly thereafter, we had Christian, and shortly thereafter, unbeknownst to her, Sydney was on the way. So she's out here. Christian's just a baby. Jordan's a knucklehead. And all I could tell her is God said. Now, I don't know about you. My wife has OCD. My wife wants to know all the answers to everything. Well, where are we going? What are we doing? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do I don't know. Sarah looks at Abram and says, where are we going? I don't know. How long is it going to take to get there? I don't know. What are we going to do when we get there? I don't know. How are we going to live? I don't know. He don't have any definitive answers to give to his darling wife, Sarah. I'm going to preach with this thought this morning. I'm going to preach on when all you have is questions. If 2020 has taught us anything... Is there a lot of things you don't have answers to? All you've got is questions. And as we're heading into 2021, there's still a lot of answers that we don't have. We don't even know who's going to be president. Election was two months ago. We don't know a lot of things. All we have are questions. So let me give you a few things when all you've got is questions. Can I say when... All you've got is question, and your world's full of uncertainty. There's some things you'll find. And I say, first of all, you can rely on the providence of God. Don't matter who's in the White House, it matters who's in heaven. You can rely on the providence of God. And you may not know where your next meal's coming from. You may not know what the future holds. You may have nothing but questions, uh, but I have a great answer for you right here. Uh, you can rely on the providences of God, on the providence of God. Uh, can I say this? He is the rock of ages. Uh, can I say he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? He changes not. Uh, in a world of uncertainty, uh, in a world that's coming apart, uh, in a world which has foundations that crumble, uh, uh, you can take refuge in the fact uh, that God uh, is still God. Uh, God has not changed. Uh, 
God is still for you and not against you. Uh, can I say you can rely that he's on this throne today? Uh, hey, he neither slumbers nor sleep. Uh, he's still looking out for you. Uh, he still sees everything that's going on in this world. Uh, God's not an old man in a rocking chair wringing his hands, uh, worried. Uh, God knows exactly how this thing's going to end. Uh, and you can take uh, refuge and rely on the fact God is still God. Uh, you can rely on the fact He's on His throne. Uh, you can rely on the fact He is trustworthy. He is faithful and true. If God said it, that settles it. Uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but His word will not pass away. Uh, uh, you can stand uh, on the things of God. Uh, you know it's impossible for God to lie. And God told Abram He'd make him a great nation. You've got to understand, Abram and Sarah didn't have any children. Abram and Sarah's old. And here God promises him that he's going to have an heir. And then God promises him, I'm going to bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. That's all Abram had was promises from God. Friend, that's all you need when you don't have any answers. Can I say this? He's on his throne, he's trustworthy. And you can rely on the fact that God is always right on time. He's never been late. Oh, you may think He's late. You may be like Martha wringing your hands. Where's the Lord? Where's the Lord? If the Lord had been here, my brother had not perished. Uh, uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, Jesus showed up right on time. Uh, and when He called for Lazarus to come forth, Lazarus came forth. Uh, you may think the Lord's forgot all about you, but He always shows up right on time. When all you got is questions and everything you face is uncertain, you can rely on the providence of God. Can I say this secondly? You can rest on His promises. Hmm? Can I help you with something? God cares about you. That's why I told Peter to write down, cast all your cares on Him for He careth for you. You may be here and say, nobody cares about me. That's not true. God cares about you. Long before he ever, you ever was, he made provision to save you. He went to an old rugged cross and died and shed his blood, was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures, uh, fulfilled the law, was the perfect Lamb of God for one reason, so you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. He cares about you. He cares about you so much. He knows the number of the hairs on your head. He knows every time you lay your head down on a pillow and go to sleep. He knows every time you get up in the morning. Uh, he knows everything that has befallen you. Uh, he knows every molecule that is in your body. Uh, he knows your down sitting up rising. He knows where you've been, where you are, where you're headed. Uh, he cares about you, friend. You, you can uh, certainly rest on that. Uh, can I say this? He not only cares. Mm, he's close. Sometimes you feel like the heavens are shut up. They're nothing but brass. There is no hope. You feel like God's a million miles away. But he said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He's close. He's only a prayer away, one songwriter wrote. I'm here to tell you he cares and he's close. And can I help you with something? You can rest on his promises. He's coming again. Huh? Before he left the last time, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, uh, he cares. Uh, he's close. Uh, but the good news is he's coming back. Uh, could be any day. Hallelujah. He's a coming. Uh, and then all your questions will be answered. Uh, you know, if you're a Bible scholar and you've got the complete Bible committed to memory and you know every doctrine that it teaches, still half of it hadn't been told. But when He appears, you'll know as you were known. And you get a glorified body like Him, you'll know it all. And then nothing will matter. Hmm? I've told this story before. I like it. I'm going to tell it again. This old preacher from South Carolina... For years, his wife was sick, bedridden. He'd go to church, come home. He had a nurse that stayed with her, and he'd come home. He'd preach a meeting, come home. And one night, he's just wore out and tired of seeing her just lay there and suffer in the bed. And he, he, he just holding her hand. He just said, baby, when we get to heaven, we're going to find out why you had to suffer like this. She patted him on the hand, and Miss Mary said, when we get to heaven, it ain't going to matter. Uh, 
Uh, he's a coming, friend. You can rest on that promise. He's coming. And I believe he's coming soon. I was thinking this morning, that old uh, Charles Feltner song, Aunt Lynn, that he, he wrote, used to sing, I'll see in the rapture. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's a coming. And he's a coming soon. Hmm? So, yeah, I got a lot of, a lot of questions without any answers, preacher. There's a lot of uncertainty going on in my world. Well, you can certainly rely on the providence of God and you can rest on His promises, but I got news for you. When things are uncertain and you don't know which direction to go, sometimes you feel like you're just about to come unglued and you're about to lose it. Well, let me help you something. You can remain true to the path He's led you to. A lot of times you think, man, I don't know if I can stay in this thing. Boy, if things are hard. I, 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 I rebuke you there. The Bible says the ways of transgressors are hard. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. My burden's light. My yoke is easy. Huh? Uh, best life you can ever have is a Christian life. And sometimes God will lead you to some paths you don't understand, and you don't know if you can put another foot in front of the others. I'm going to tell you something. Abram got exactly where he needed to get to. Mm. And so can you. Huh? Mm. You can remain true to the path he's led you to. Do you know he doesn't lead you to anywhere that he hadn't equipped you for? Now, sometimes we allow things to come into our life of our own making. But God has equipped you for anything that he has called you to do. Any path he has led you to, he has equipped you to travel that path. Can I help you something? He has equipped you for every bend in the road. We like him straight paths, don't we? Huh? Put it on cruise and let her fly. Hmm? We don't like them curvy roads. Now, I like that gorge going from Tennessee to North Carolina. One of these days, I told Miss Nett, I'm going to travel that to Corvette, and I hope there aren't any semis on the road. I'm going to crank her down. I've, got, I've traveled that road so much, I know it, most of those curves are banked wrong, Pete. Most of them, they're going against the grain, but I've got them all figured out. There's one's pretty treacherous. Other than that, I got, last time we traveled it, we was in that infinity, and uh, uh, I know I scared her a few times. I was just getting it ready for when I got that vet to drive on that thing, huh? When you got a vet or a sports car with a stick shift, curves aren't that bad of a deal, okay? especially if you know how to straighten them out. But anyway, I digress. I'm here to tell you, though. Y'all remember Mike Massey? I love Brother Mike. Brother Mike, when we first started coming to church here, I got to tell the story. It has nothing to do with the message, but I got to tell the story. They first started coming to church here, and I mentioned I was going to a camp meeting. So he asked the IRS if he could take time off to go to camp meeting with me. And, you know, Mike had about seven years of six, sick days saved up. He never took off. And they was glad. Yeah, well, give you, please take off. Take off. So he showed up. I didn't know him well. He just, he just started coming to church. You want to go to camp meeting? Sure, go to camp meeting. Uh, so he shows up and he wants to take his car. That's what he had, that blue zebra. And I said, well, that's a blessing. Brother Mike wants to drive the preacher to the camp meeting. That's fine. I did not know some things about Mike. Number one, he never gets in the left lane, ever. Number two, he drives from yellow line to white line, yellow line to white line, yellow line. He, ne he doesn't keep it straight. It's always zig zigzagging between the one lane he stays in. Miss Annette called, we're in the gorge. There's 17 semi-trucks doing six miles an hour, and Mike won't get in the left lane and pass them. He's in the right lane behind all these semi-trucks. Miss Annette calls. She says, what are you doing? I said, I'm looking for a place to jump. <laughs> Say, what happened? When we got to the camp meeting, I asked for his keys, and from that time forward, whenever Mike went with me somewhere, the first thing he'd do is hand me his keys. He knew I was driving, huh? Uh, we don't like those bends. We like seeing way out ahead know what's going to happen. But sometimes life throws you some curves. But I've got good news. God has equipped you for all of those bends that you don't think you can handle. Mm, can I say this? You can remain true to your path. He's equipped you for the bends. He's equipped you for the bumps. We don't like those bumps. 
They'll jar us. They might shake us. Sometimes God throws them bumps in there to shake us up a little bit because we've gotten too complacent. But sometimes there's bumps there just to needle us. The devil tries to needle you to get you off the path. But you can't stay on the path. Jordan was driving to work the other day, hit a pothole, had to buy a tire. Huh? You know, nobody likes that. Why don't they fix the goofy roads? They've got enough tax dollars to do it. Why don't they do that? It's frustrating. Sometimes life's frustrating. But God has equipped you to handle the path he's, he's led you to. Sometimes there's bends. Sometimes there's bumps. But can I say this? Sometimes you've got blockades. Sometimes you just seem like you can't press through. But he's equipped you for even the blockades. Sometimes he just has you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes you've been traveling in the energy of you. And God allows a blockade for you to just stand still for a little while as you just see the mighty hand of God again. Watch Him remove your blockades. When you don't have the answers, all you got is questions. You can rely on the providence of God. You can rest on His promises. You can remain true to the paths He's led you to, but you can be resolved in His peace. Thank God for John 14. Verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Sometimes, when everything around you is falling apart, you can just rest in the peace of God. In Hebrews 4, 9 says, There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. Sometimes it just don't make sense and everything is chaotic and all you can do is sit there and say, thank God I'm saved. Yeah, right. hmm? Sometimes uh, all you can handle is that flood of peace that God gives you that passes all understanding. And aren't you glad He's always on time? When your world should be turned upside down for whatever reason, you can just say, hallelujah. It could be worse. How can you do that when your world's falling apart? It's called peace, peace, wonderful peace flowing down from the Father above. Thanks be unto God for His peace. Mm -mm. I mean, this world's chaotic. Mm -mm. This world's lost its mind. Mm -mm. Uh, I don't know if you read, but Grouchy Fauci admitted this past week that he has spread disinformation. Duh! Been telling everybody that since March. Huh? It's amazing. One doctor says, just go live your life. Another doctor says, oh no, you can't breathe. Hold your breath till Jesus comes. I mean, you know, it's, it's a mess. What's sad is there's a lot of people, all they do is watch the news and believe everything they hear. And they're just confused. There's a lot of chaos. Hmm. And depending on what kind of politician you got in office, who knows what this thing's going to happen. This thing's gone crazy. But regardless what happens, I have peace because of the Word of God. David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. God takes care of his own. That's all I can tell you. Hmm? So what are we going to do, preacher? We're just going to trust God. That's all I know to do. It'll be okay. Preacher, what about this? What about God? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Is anything too hard for God? Amen. And I'm glad I've got peace. And I'm resolved in His peace. The old hymn writers wrote, I'm resolved no longer to linger. Thanks, thanks be unto God for peace. And I thought about this lastly. And all you got is questions. In a world of uncertainty. And things are chaotic. We taught Wednesday night about the great tribulation period. People got questions. People wanted, Lord, when this Wednesday we'll be on the Antichrist. And what does all that mean, preacher? When everything's as crazy as it is right now. Thought about this. Be reassured. The ship's headed to the port. Yeah. Amen. Hebrews tells us that we have an anchor within the veil, steadfast and sure. 
Jesus is our anchor. You do realize he's already in glory. And he's dropped anchor on the shore. And we as the church are the old ship of Zion. And we're attached to that anchor huh, by that chain of the Holy Ghost. And he's just been reeling the ship in. They tell me when a big ship gets ready to come into a narrow port, they'll send out a tugboat. And they'll drop that anchor in that tugboat, and that tugboat will take it into port and drop it into port, and they just start reeling that ship in, and they'll put that ship right where it needs to go. Uh, I've got good news to you. Because of the anchor, uh, and because of the Holy Ghost, uh, He's just reeling us in. Uh, the ship's not going down, friend. The church is going up. Hallelujah. Uh, and we're going to shore. Uh, you can bank on the fact, uh, soon and very soon, we're going to dock on heaven's shore. Uh, we're going to step off the boat and be home. Uh, and will we be with the Lord forevermore? Uh, hey, uh, you can be reassured. Uh, everything's all right in heaven. Uh, this thing's winding down just like God said it would. Uh, and one day soon we'll be home. Uh, say, what about all this chaos? Well, the devil can have it. I'm going to glory. The uh, Bible says God's not the author of confusion, He gives us what we need. For every step we take. Now I'm certain on Abram's journey. They had some bumps in the road. Can you imagine? Packing up everything you had. And by the way he's a wealthy man. He had a lot of cattle. Had a lot of goats and sheep. Had a lot of uh, 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 camels. He had a lot of workers and herdsmen. And he's having to keep all that mess and they're traveling across the desert and he's got to keep mama happy. I imagine they had some bad days. Matter of fact, when they got to Egypt, they had some bad days. But can I say this? They didn't take one step without God being there. And they got exactly where God wanted them. And God gave them the promised son. And God is still working because Abram stepped out on faith. Friend, when you don't have all the answers, just walk by faith. That's all I can tell you. It's always been a faith way. It's always been set your eyes on Jesus and just walk towards Him. Uh, the Bible still says, draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to you. Just, just keep walking toward Jesus till you bump into Him. It'll be all right. Quit listening to the noise of the world. If you're saved, you ought to listen to God. He's got all the answers. He may just give them to you one syllable at a time, but just keep following Him, and it'll be all right. I wonder this morning, in the midst of you being filled with questions, have you begun to doubt God? Well, He's right where you left Him. Why don't you get back to where He's at, tell Him you're sorry for doubting Him, and ask Him to help you. Maybe you're here today. He said, Preacher, I've been, I've been doing my best, but I'm starting to struggle. Well, why don't you go to the one that cares for you and ask him to help you in your struggles? Maybe you're here today and say, Preacher, I want to go to heaven, but I don't know if I'm going. Today would be a good day to make sure you're on the ship. Right. Right. Mm. Why don't you come? We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be born again. So you know what that song's about, that he touched me. I remember the day he touched me. My life's never been the same. And if you can't go to a place where the Lord touched you and changed your life forever, why don't you come this morning and give your heart and life to Jesus? He'll change you today. Maybe there's something else going on in your life. Maybe God's been dealing with you about something you don't even know what he's dealing with you about, and you just need to come and talk to him. Now be a good time to come and say, Lord, just help me. Maybe you know somebody's really under load. Why don't you come pray for them? Maybe you know somebody's not saved. You ought to come pray for them. We don't know how much time we, they've got. All I know is he has all the answers. He's altogether lovely and he's all-knowing. He's the omniscient one. He's the omnipotent one. He's the omnipresent one. And you can have an audience with him today if you come and call on him in prayer. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, maybe you need to come pray. If you're not saved, why don't you come? We'll have somebody take a Bible so you can trust the Lord.
All your answers about salvation could be all your questions about salvation can be answered once you come today. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, we live in uncertain times. We live in dark times. But Lord, thank you for the glorious light of the gospel. Thank you for the light in our soul. Thank you for the peace that does pass us all understanding. Thank you for hope and hopelessness. Thank you, Lord, for kindness in a world of hatred. Thank you, Lord, for just being so good to us. Now, Father, there may be some here today really up against it. Got a lot of questions, no answer. I pray they'd come, and Lord, you just help them. Lord, there may be somebody here today just really struggling. They're in a valley and struggling. I pray they'd find the lily of the valley in their valley. And then, Father, there may be somebody here unsaved. Lord, it may be good, a good person, but just unsaved. Lord, I pray they'd come, give their heart and life to Jesus. Lord, I pray you just do a work in this invitation. Help folks to realize you're in control. And Father, we'll not fail to give you the glory for everything that's said and done. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.